Um, I'm going to get going then. Uh, my name is James Pepper. I'm the chair of the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. Today is March 29th, 2023. It's 3.01 p.m. And I'm calling this special meeting of the Cannabis Control Board to order. Um, so sorry to everyone watching about the late notice of this meeting. Um, essentially, you know, when we moved to a monthly meeting, we also set some um, parameters about application approvals. And essentially, um, anyone who wants to get on the list for approval at our monthly board meeting has to have all of their um, documentation and compliance site visits uh, by the Monday proceeding. And, um, you know, after our meeting on Monday, uh, we were uh, two applicants who had all of their documentation complete reached out to us um, and that triggered just an internal review and we noticed that um, because of a few internal technical issues that they did in fact have their licenses um, or their uh, application materials and their site review complete and reviewed. Um, this really was kind of a internal accounting problem on our end. And um, so we are here to correct that um, today. Um, we are going to review two um, applications for approval and the board will vote on those. Um, I wanted to make a quick announcement while we're having this meeting about packaging. Um, this uh, is an issue that's come up a few times now and I just wanted to be absolutely clear. Um, there is a distinction, a legal distinction um, in the cannabis statutes between cannabis, the flower, and cannabis products. And um, cannabis flower is the plant material and pre-rolls. Cannabis products are when you manipulate cannabis flower to make products like edibles, like tinctures, essentially anything but flower or pre-rolls. And this is really a critical legal distinction uh, when it comes to packaging. Um, you know, we advocated for and had the legislature lower the standard for cannabis flower, cannabis itself, and pre-rolls. Um, so it does not need child resistant packaging. Child deterrence is a term of art, but it's a lesser form of it's it's a non-child resistant, certified child resistant packaging. It does require certain things. Those things are uh, identified in our um, guidance documents, but it does not require a child resistant cap. Um, you know, our rules um, say that uh, for cannabis products, um, you know, consumer uh, retail store, sorry, that <laughs> here I am trying to be clear. Um, so in order to, We've banned plastic. Um, we've created a waiver process for people that cannot achieve child resistance for cannabis products only. Um, we've issued temporary waivers, um, and there's been some misunderstanding about that waiver process. We issued a, um, a temporary waiver for a child resistant humidico lid, and that waiver is specific to cannabis products. It Cannot, that lid is not permissible um, for cannabis flower. Um, and because of that, um, you know, anyone who's been using a humidico lid for cannabis flower or cannabis pre-rolls um, is going to get a communication from the board. Um, that, um, of a registration error and waiver that will allow you to use your existing supply of these humidico lids for your flower. Um, until the, and once those are used up, you won't be permitted to use those for flower anymore. And I hope that was clear. <laughs> yeah, let me try and put a bow on that. Um, Cause I know a lot of folks reach out to me about packaging all the time. We were starting the waiver process and really looking at um, what plastic was necessary um, for cannabis to be packaged and on store shelves over the summer before our market launched. Um, I think our internal team recognized that achieving child resistance, because that is a federal standard without plastic, um, was challenging. And so when that waiver was given at that time over the summer, 
what was put on our website said concentrates and other products. You know, we can always get better at communicating certain things um, or being more clear um, to us, concentrates and other products. Um, we've always drawn a distinction between flour and products in our rules and um, in our statutes as Pepper alluded to previously, um, without a public or a product registration system at the time that we opened, um, you know, we saw flour starting to be packaged in Humidico lids. Um, now that we've moved through the product registration backlog and kind of see how many folks are using these, we, we want folks to um, exhaust their inventory of those lids and those jars that they've, uh, that they've already purchased. Um, however, for moving forward, we need to get back to what the waiver actually means, which is for child resistant purposes for cannabis products. Uh, I've heard from a number of manufacturers um, that cannot find jars and lids, and they actually need these lids for child resistance. Flour doesn't. We're trying to flip this narrative that child resistance is not necessary for flour. When I see 60 to 70 percent of our flour um, being packaged with child resistant lids, and I think our team feels the same way. We're not going to move that needle. We're not going to show other states that it's not necessary either. Um, so we need to continuously improve. We're hoping that making this announcement now will exhaust your supplies um, by the time that waiver, um, you know, is up in September, and we'll look to to renew it for uh, manufactured products if it if it makes sense then, as well. But I don't want anybody to panic. We'll allow you to exhaust um, what you've already purchased. There's going to be communications to specific folks that are registered with these products. Um, we're going to want to see and know what your quantities are and likely a copy of, um, you know, your receipt of the inventory that you've purchased and we'll track things through um, inventory tracking on our end that way. Um, I have talked to Humidico representatives. They know we've made this decision and this distinction. Um, we don't want to guide anybody down a path including, you know, the packaging companies um, to be out of compliance. So, um, again, please do not purchase any more of those. But if you have them already, we're willing to work with you as we kind of find the exit ramp on making sure that that flour is not packaged with those lids. I don't know if that was no, more concise or longer or helpful, mm -hmm. but uh, it's where we stand. Okay. Um, Bring, can you please uh, can you present the two uh, applications that we missed yet on Monday? Yep. Okay. So. We've just got two on the list today, and these applicants have demonstrated compliance with all requi requirements for their license contained in board rule and in statute. And they are Cloud9 Cannabis applying for a retail license and Green Mountain Ganja Guys applying for a tier two manufacturing license. And would you mind uh, just briefly describing um, why they didn't make it on for Monday, what the kind of internal technical issue was? Yes, certainly. So the, um, the first applicant um, that that uh, did not make it on the list for Monday um, had a submitted their application during a time that there was a problem with the portal. Um, and that required board staff to go in and manually manipulate their application. Um, and that manual manipulation resulted in um, like the elimination of an internal checklist that board staff uses to conduct all of the due diligence on the application and associated documents. Um, so as a result, that application appeared to be incomplete and therefore it wasn't designated for a final review. So that was entirely our internal error. Um, and then the second applicant had sent um, a, a portion of their application, a document associated with their application to a staff member's personal email account um, rather than um, upload it directly or send it to the appropriate inbox 
And so as a result, that submission was temporarily lost. Um, so we would like to remind everybody to please upload documents directly to the application portal. Or if you can't upload them directly for some reason, submit all of that information and any document associated with your application to the application inbox, which is ccb.applications.vermont.gov. So again, technically an internal error, um, and that's why we wanted to make sure and get them approved um, during a special meeting. Great. Okay. Um, well, um, why don't we make a motion and uh, then have some discussion if, if we need to. I move the board accept each of the recommendations as presented to us by staff in this meeting. Second. Any discussion about these two? Any questions for Bryn? No, thanks for catching the air. I know we don't typically do special meetings, but if it's something that, you know, we're human too. <laughs> so appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Great. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we're just going to shift to then to public comment if there are, if there is any. Um, we'll do it the same way as in a normal meeting. If you join via the video link, please raise your virtual hand and uh, we'll call on you in the order that you raise your hand. And then we will shift to anyone who's joined via phone. Hello, thanks for uh, taking the question or comment here. Um, just, I know a lot of people have the same questions, same concerns, but we're just checking in about product registration and looking for any comments or updates or, you know, reassurances that the CACB can give us about specifically older registrations from the old system that are, that are waiting. Um, you know, we've we've specifically are getting to the point with, you know, with retailers where they're struggling to know what to do with inventory for goods that, you know, seem to have all the check boxes in place for the registration, but have yet to be approved. Um, they don't appear in the portal. They were prior to portal. So we get emails that say incomplete and as instructed, do the product registration email for all the documents and still waiting on those approvals. There's three we email about all the time and leave messages. Just hoping to push that through. I know we understand that a lot of people have the same concerns about the registration. We're just, you know, hoping that we can get some sort of a formal update or comment or, you know, addressing of the, you know, of the, the later ones from the older system that have yet to show up in the new one. Okay. Um, thank you. One of them does. Yeah. Okay. We'll have someone reach out to you about that. We really appreciate it. We understand that other people are, are waiting on this also. We're not, you know, unique here, but thank you so much for understanding the, oh. the urgency of, of this given the time. Uh, we're also curious is an infused pre roll a pre roll or a flower? Or, or I should say, you know, as a manufactured good yes. or a flower? Yeah, that, that would that'd be a product. That would be a product. Thank you. And um, we're just waiting on a packaging waiver. I think you guys said you're going to be addressing those later in the call. We applied for a child resistant pre roll packaging waiver for. So that was over like a month ago. Thank you very much. We sincerely do understand and appreciate. Yeah, thank you. Hey guys, just wanted to just clarify uh, about what you were talking about, those lids. So if somebody has purchased those compostable lids um, and they can show evidence of their purchase and the date that they had them in the amount, but they have not yet submitted them for approval, we'll still be able to use those until we don't have them anymore. Is that correct? We're trying to draw a distinction at products that have already been registered. Um, 
if you have done that, you know, they can still be used if you have a manufacturing license. I know that there are manufacturers out there looking for these lids. And so, you know, it feels like, a, a you know, there's an opportunity to you know, speak with other licensees on who might need these lids. But um, well, so what, what I meant was, you know, like I purchased a bunch of these lids thinking that I was taking another step towards sustainability because they say that they're home compostable. And so, you know, I bought 5,000 jars and lids. I've yet to submit them because I was going to go through my current, you know, packaging before I use these. So if I can show you guys the purchase date that it was from, you know, three, four months ago when they were originally purchased, can I submit that and still use them until they're gone? That's not what we're intending to do here. I mean, man, you know, I, I thought I was in goodwill trying to become more sustainable by buying what I saw other people using and spent a lot of money to buy 5,000 of them and just wanted to kind of go through what I was currently doing. I'll, I'll send an email. I would hope that you guys would, would be willing to work something out. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Anyone else for public comment? Um, please raise your virtual hand, um, and if you join by a phone and would like to comment, um, you can hit star six to unmute your line. Uh, yes, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm I'm wondering about this cover thing in the fact that the cover for flower is a if it's used in the flower by your description, it seems to be above and beyond. Excuse me. What would uh, be I'm wondering about this cover thing. I'm sorry, I got some Robert feedback Robert there. Flower is uh, Frank. Is it yeah. flower? By your description, it seems to be above and beyond. Excuse me. Uh, yes, thank you. So, uh, the it seems to me again that if if we make a more uh, a, a more what word do I want to use here uh, if I use that cover for flower which by your description seem to be above and beyond what is necessary so therefore we're doing a better thing one uh, rhetorically why why wouldn't that be okay and then two um i didn't hear anybody say specifically uh and and especially the commenter just before me these inventories uh why aren't we selling these inventories you know if you're going to make a hard line on no no we're not going to use them for flour uh can we sell them to the manufacturers who have been stated to be in dire need. Um, and I'm glad to see that you guys saw an internal uh, problem and, and had this special meeting to take that. Thank you. Yep, and let's just see if I can try to be clear on this because I recognize it, it is confusing. Um, plastic is not allowed in this industry. Um, that's rule 2.2.9. Um, we recognize that certain products need require child resistant um, packaging and that there really are no options for non-plastic child resistance. If a kid eats a bunch of cannabis flour, they're not gonna be rushed to the hospital. They're not gonna have a psychoactive response. Um, so we make waivers for cannabis products that allow for certain types of plastic. We don't make those same waivers when it's not necessary for cannabis flour because you don't need child resistant packaging for flour. And so there's no, there's no need to put 
um, a child resistant lid. It's not necessary on a flower jar. And uh, yes, uh, any person out there, you know, we registered some products with, for flour with this Humidico lid. And we want to give people the benefit that uh, they relied on that and went out and bought products. But for unregistered products um, for flour, you know, we don't have to extend that same, you know, courtesy because you weren't relying on a communication by the board. Um, but what Kyle was suggesting is that there is a shortage of these Humidico lids on the product manufacturing side. So any person who is packaging flour with a Humidico lid that's registered, they can continue to use that until their uh, supply has been exhausted. Or they could sell it to a product manufacturer, which I think is, are pretty desperate to get these things right now. Um, so uh, That's my understanding and what, what I've heard. Um, I have heard some folks want child resistant lids because they think there's potential liability for their flower business, and that is categorically untrue. It is in law that you do not need that. We are one of two states in the country that does not require child resistance for flower, us, and Oregon. But if all of our lids are child resistant, you know, what incentives do other states have to try and move that needle as well? We're trying to push this industry to be regulated more normally, right? This is an area where we all need to work together to do that. And so, yes, we're putting folks on notice now to exhaust current inventories with registered products. That's where we're drawing that line in the sand and we're gonna move forward from there. Ellie, did you say that there was someone with their hand raised? Hello, thank you for having me. Having us. Um, so I had submitted product registration a while ago. I got my product registration and now we are redoing our labels. I had spoke to Carrie and he told me to email them into, um, I believe her name is Lauren, the product registration email, and they would approve them. That was almost a month ago and I haven't heard back. I was specifically told I did not need to do new product registration to just to do new labels. So I wanted to clarify on how I can get this done. Um, exact same product, exact same everything, just new label. Okay. I, I know we've engaged in a little bit of a back and forth in Q&A here. Um, maybe that was appropriate in the packaging lid context, Michelle, but we'll have, we'll make sure somebody gets, um, you know, in touch with you, okay? Awesome, thank you guys. Anyone else for public comment? Sorry, I had some issue with the old mute button right there. Um, I've been trying to reach out to the central line for a few weeks just to uh, kind of clarify some vague issues that have arisen via product registration for uh, white label manufacturing. Uh, I spoke briefly with a board member the other day, but they seemed somewhat uncertain on a number of issues, though they were quite helpful on some other ones. Um, was just hoping someone could uh, get back to me at some point. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bobby. Uh, yeah, very briefly, Bobby. I know you make a lot of cool products. They're also very complicated <laughs> for us to review, so hang tight, okay? Oh, no, I'm not even talking about my own lingering product registrations. I understand that. <laughs> um, but, like, there's just been, like, vague issues with, like, if we get a pro – we do, like, packaging services. So if we get a product made by another manufacturer on behalf of a cultivator and we package it for them, who is supposed to, you know, register that? It's, like, weird niche situations like that that I understand are also somewhat frustrating. So whenever anyone has the time for, like, 10 minutes on the phone. Appreciate it. We're working on it. That's all I got to say. Great. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks for the comment. Hi, uh, apologies. Uh, Jason from Birdman, Vermont. I missed the first 10 minutes. I thought it was about um, new hires, but uh, I understand that the home compostable, just need to verify this. I know it's annoying, but the home compostable lids that fit my 53 400 thread uh so i know correctly for flower 
products is no longer going to be allowed. Is that accurate? If you have a um, if you have a product that's been registered using that lid, we're going to make an allowance for you to exhaust your existing inventory. Uh, if it hasn't been registered um, and moving forward beyond your existing inventory, we will not allow the Humidico lid for cannabis flower or for pre-rolls. Okay. So, I mean, just due to the nature of, you know, having your packaging in inventory in order for your harvest. So my registered products was five pounds and that's all sold. I prepared myself for the next two rounds, which is 10 pounds of lids and jars that fit those lids. I know it's annoying. I see your frustration, but this is the only way we can get clarification. I'm another person that's invested in these lids. So now we're not allowed to use them. My labels fit my jars that specific jars only fit those lids. Now I can't use them. So I just need to know. And my option is to either sell to somebody else because I'm getting ready to register the product with the lids and the jars that I have prepped to pack them. So if it's not registered right now, I can't really use them. So that delays everything. And this is this is pretty, you know, this is a big deal. Um, we've, we stress that by narrowing in us to use specific lids that the market was gonna demand and they're not gonna be able to produce them. So now we're in this situation. So I just needed to make sure that that's clear. So I need to sell these lids and start over again. Is that what you're saying? If your products are not registered, Jason, then that is what we're saying. Again, we wow. approved this. We approved this waiver for products initially. It was clear on the website. We're making it more clear and we're starting to, you know, figure out a path forward for everybody. Okay. Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. Anyone else for a public comment? Kelly, this Hello. Hello. Frank, you're we can uh, there there's something going on with your microphone, Frank. We can hear you, but you're very faint. Yeah, I just want to say I hope we can all work this out and make it work. <laughs> That's all. And there's too many rules, but I'll talk to you later. I'm not a computer guy. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Frank. We can hear you. Ben? Thank you. Um, since you mentioned Oregon as another trailblazer, I was curious if you have some good examples of jars for flour with screw top lids, because the ones with the plastic seal are a little too big for eights and quarters and they dry the flour out and they're not ideal. So if we could have some like ideal storage jars for cannabis that are compliant as well as pre-rolls that are manufactured, like some examples on the page of what are appropriate to order would be super helpful.
I will. Thank you. Any uh, anyone else for a public comment? Um, raise your virtual hand, and again, the um, if you join via phone, you can unmute by hitting star six. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm wondering what the process for um, having a type of packaging, specifically a beverage packaging, be considered by the CCB as uh, child resistant, certain type of packaging that's like currently not being used in the market, but I think could get qualified. I'm just wondering who would qualify it and how I could like submit a type of packaging for that sort of approval by the CCB. Okay. okay, thank you. Yes, um, this may not be an appropriate question and maybe it's been answered long before, but I'm just curious, why can't some of these um, questions related to some of the growers, manufacturers related to the, the packaging using these plastic products why can't they be grandfathered in for another three months or so and that the, the deadline would become effective you have to get in your request for being grandfathered in by a certain date and it won't be extended by another fixed date and it sort of seems to me it might solve the problem it's not my problem but i'm just curious about the obstacles to doing that. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for the comment. It's not how we're going to do it. We can see who has these products and her using them in our product registration system, and we'll be in communication with the folks that we have registered with these products. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you again. Um, one comment that I had overlooked, and I want to change the focus to security. Um, I'm not a computer tech sort of person either, as I've heard mentioned before. And I find um, a great deal of anxiety over the fact that somebody's application information went to a personal email. Uh, this information that we have to disclose as uh, potential licensees and licensees in this industry is, as far as I'm concerned, very highly classified. Uh, you know, we're talking social security numbers, we're talking resident identifications, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to strongly suggest, as I'm sure you probably are doing, uh, some internal review on how such an egregious event could have happened. Thank you. Yeah, I would just say that the applicant sent it to one of our staff's personal emails. It wasn't the other way around. We can't control what people are sending to us. All of our uh, systems are um, meet all of the state security requirements and are tested uh, for uh, security threats. Pepper, can I just clarify by personal email? Are we talking about someone's like individual personal email individual or their work email? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um. I'll just clarify because it was me, and I know you guys don't want to uh, disclose personal information, but what happened was that I sent some documents to an individual staff member at their CCB email address, not a personal email address, uh, rather than the uh, correct mailbox uh, CCB applications. It was my error, and I appreciate that the uh, staffer was able to catch it, uh, and thank you. So that error was mine, not the CCBs, want to make very clear. All right. Anyone else? Public comment?
Hi, um, I just have a question about inventory tracking um, on the retail side. Um, it seems like there could be maybe some more options for it. Um, this is like a lost, a lost comment. Um, there are some things we've had happen, like uh, we got a pre-roll tube that somebody was sold that ended up being empty, and that was like our oversight, but it was something that was counted in our inventory as having as like, and so there's there's just would be nice if there was like an other option in the loss tracking section so that we could maybe write a note about exactly what had happened because it seems like the the loss um, tracking is kind of more geared towards cultivators and um, manufacturers. So I just wanted to like throw that note out there. Thank, thanks for the comment. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is related to a question that was just raised about how to send documentation digitally if it's not capable of being uploaded. Should it go to the application inbox? Is that the appropriate place to send it? Sure. What about for Okay, but if I have an application that was um what dormant and I'm trying to activate it, and I can't upload some of the information uh, in on that in that section where one would normally do so. So, is there an option to sending that scanned information to another address? I'm happy to jump in here, Nelly, if that's helpful. Yep. Um, if you can send us the um, submission number and let us know that you're trying to attach some information. Um, we can look to see if that if we need to unfreeze that for you um, or make um, uh, some sort of um, SharePoint folder for you. Um, but if you just let us know, um, you know which submission it is, we'll get back to you on uh, good steps forward. And that should be sent to whom? That yep request ccb.applications at okay. vermont.gov thank you very much i appreciate that Which Jason, me? Hi, uh, my apologies if this is a repeat question, but uh, my uh, my question being is if I have created labels for my bulk flour and one gram pre-rolls, uh, do I need to complete a separate product registration for a 0.5 gram pre-roll or can I just make the label? Okay, thank you. Anyone else, Nelly? All right. Well, I will close the public comment window. Um, thank you for all the comments. Thank you for the questions. You know, they really do help the, direct the board, show us where the problems are. And, um, you know, we, we'll all get through this together. I know it's challenging. I know this is a highly regulated industry. Um, and, 
you know, everyone's trying very hard to be compliant and, uh, you know, we'll get through these issues. Yeah, we know the packaging thing. It's, it's a high it's a high ask for everybody. I'm very thankful for everybody that's doing their best to comply here. We, we can really put a dent in the overregulating part of things and moving away from child resistance if we all work together. So thank you. All right, Julie, is there anything you wanted to add? Okay, um, then I will adjourn this special meeting and we will um, see you all next month.